talking with uh, Henry Guaya, a resident of uh, Isabella for how many years now? Well, I, I lived here just about all my life, 70, 71 years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I, I lived in Nama well, after I got married from 1940 to 1952. Okay. And, um, and you. Uh, you worked over at the at the mill at the mill, at the mill then for yeah I worked at the mill from 1940 right on through until the lumber mill shut down and I think it was 1950 or 51 not sure yeah the lumber mill closed down in 51 when yeah. they ran out of lumber July in July of 51 well I worked there all all that all them years. I did. Uh, I drove what they call them tram bugs to haul lumber out to the out to the uh, yard where they piled it. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I went as a mechanic on the trucks hauling logs. They haul logs from Grand Marais to the mill, and I was a truck mechanic there for from 1947 to 51. Now, um, when you were working there. Now they had boats coming in off the harbor. Oh yeah, off they the had, harbor they, right that they uh, in the early year, years of 1940, they used to have a pulp boat come in mm -hmm. and haul the pulp wood. But they, they also had a, a lumber boat coming in. Okay. They used to they used to haul the lumber by boat at least once a year. Okay. Yeah, I don't know how many million feet of lumber they put on it. So it was an awful big pile of lumber. And so we'd, we'd uh, pilot on the docks, and the boat would come in, and then they'd have uh, derrick or cranes, whatever you want to call them, pick it up in, in so many tiers of lumber, and pick it up, and then set it on the boat. Okay. So you imagine you didn't have to. When they first started, they used to have to handle every board. But in the latter years, they, they used uh, cranes to pick it up, and they they put it in about. Well, Two, three thousand feet at a time. Set it down. Okay. And in, uh, in, in these boats, now they went to the pulp boats. They went to different uh, mills all, all along the Great Lakes, or just. Or I just don't know exactly the where the pulp, uh, uh, but uh, the lumber boats mostly went to Sheepack Dimension in Escanaba. That's where most of that went. Okay. So they. So they more or less didn't uh, process uh, lumber and uh, pulp for different ports along the Great Lakes. And no, it was just no. They had an outlet for the pulp, but, but I don't mm -hmm. know where if it went to just exactly where it went. All right. If it went to Wisconsin or where it went, some of it might have went to Wisconsin. The mm -hmm. pulp would. Okay. Now, like you said, you were a truck mechanic for. Well, for from 47 to 51? Mm-hmm. On the trucks, yeah. No, the trucks are are more or less just like just like the pulp trucks they have now. They, they well, they, they, they were older, you know. They weren't right. they weren't equipped like they are today. They, oh yeah. They were just logs. They all only hauled all the logs is all. Mm-hmm. They were hauling the pulp. They had a trailer was, and, and they hauled logs. And and so it was it was a. Tractor trailer trucks type right. setup, right? Mm -hmm. But it was just uh, now they hauled the logs and the lumber from the mill like to, o over to meeting places like that. No, no, they never hauled no lumber there for, for logs. They just they just hauled all the logs right to the mill and they sawed it up there. It okay. was sawed in the mill. All the logs that they hauled was hauled right down to the mill. Okay, so those so those lumber trucks more or less came from the lumber camps up in the woods and stuff, and then hauled the. You mean the, the logging truck? Yes. They are. They come from the Grand Marais. See, that was the last uh, years that they had a job. Okay. They hauled uh, and it, uh, from Grand Marais. They had a, their own fleet of trucks plus hired trucks hauling in. Mm -hmm. Logs. And uh, on your uh, 
when you work there as a, as a truck mechanic, uh, was uh, was NEMA itself pretty busy as far as the oh, yeah. as, as far as the store, the clubhouse? The oh, everyone, everyone was going. All all the all the store and the hotel and the, the clubhouse was all, it was all going. Now, around what year did they? Well, they I know they kept the uh, the gym in the clubhouse open for the for the high school. Right. But, but the places like the candy kitchen, the bowling alley, and the barbershop, and places like that, are around what year did they uh, close down? They, uh, back there, I'm not sure. Don't quote me on this, but it was about uh, 52. 52? Yeah, 1952. And, uh, as far as I can recall. And then uh, the name of clubhouse was was mainly used like for yeah, for basketball after that. For basketball after that then, right? Mm -hmm. And then having the having the uh, hotel in the town, was the hotel like a boarding house for some of the mill workers at the time or was it for tourists and like mostly for the uh, office staff. Office staff? To uh, the the uh, Mill workers that boarded there, uh, they stayed in the boarding house. They had a big boarding house in the kitchen down the road uh, toward where the hospital was. And now the, the hospital used to be? Right on the corner from, uh, I don't know what the name of that street. It's, uh, it was right, right on across the, from the Township Hall, wasn't it? No, it was on that corner down on Main Street, right across from uh, uh, peanut sergeants there. Okay, no, all right. That, and there, that's where the hospital was. Then the boarding house was uh, uh, in between that corner and the uh, uh, tennis court. There was a big boarding house there and a kitchen. Mm -hmm. And uh, now, did those, now, as, as I remember right, there was a, like a town fire in 1921. Well, that's there before my time. I wouldn't okay. know when that was. So no, the only fire I know was, <coughs> excuse me, was the club off in 1946 or 47. I think it was in 46. It burnt down and then they built a new one, the one that's there now in 47. Okay, because I know, because I know that there was three, that there's been three clubhouses on that same site. Yeah, well, I don't know when the other ones burnt down. I couldn't mm -hmm. tell you on that. And uh, and so and so the clubhouse and the hotel and and, and the other buildings were were in uh, full swing around that around that the early 40s up to about uh, 47 when the lumber camps uh, got done up on a name on order line with the railroad well then. They didn't have the. They, they didn't have the. They didn't use the boarding house no more mm -hmm. because they, had, they were had up at camp at Grand Marais. The guys stayed up there, mm -hmm. so they just continued that right around in uh, oh, I'd say 48, 49, somewhere in there. So they they uh, they tore down the the boarding house in the hospital, didn't they? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was a it was a, a three-story building that boarding house, the yeah. rooming house, in the room. And the the hospitality house that's still standing down there, that used to, if I if my memory serves me right, that used to be like a president's home or something. Uh, it was a vice president, Bill Acker. He lived there. Okay, and uh, and then that house that uh, burnt down by by the church there that. That was where the, uh, the... That was Doc, um, Doc Bernier lived in there. Oh, that was a doctor's place? Mm-hmm. And then... So you... So you were, uh... Pretty busy around... Around, uh... Working in the... 
mill and stuff like that. It was oh it, yeah, see, I worked in the mill and then I worked in the clubhouse also at night. Worked the mill and then at night I'd work in the clubhouse, help got the bar in the clubhouse until I start working on the truck, and then I couldn't work no more in the club because I had to work at night on the truck when they'd come in. So the, when, the mill, when the mill was running, the mill was more or less uh, um, running 24 hours a day, seven days a no. week? No. No, they were only working uh, uh, four, five, eight-hour days. And some years, when they got, during the war, that they got uh, Pressed for a little more time, they got more orders, and we had to work Saturday mornings, four and hours on Saturday morning. And then, uh, when the mill closed down, um, did uh, most of the mill workers go on to work for American Playground? Well, most of them did, but there's a lot of them that left town. Some of them went to the railroad on Gladstone. Some of them went to to uh, lumber companies elsewhere, you know, some went out, out west or lumber company. And uh, that was around the time when, uh, like, places like the hotel and the clubhouse went nearly downhill, right? Yeah, that's when they closed their down there. Yeah. Because uh, um, American Playground really didn't have any use for them? Or? Well, it, it, it didn't coincide with their type of business. They didn't want to sell alcohol and beer and, and manufacturing playground equipment. So that, didn't, that didn't correspond with one another. Okay, yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty so logical. They, so they didn't want to have the club of corn. For the okay. In, uh, in the, the plant, the hotel, the clubhouse, and the store were all powered by uh, steam turbines that was located in the plant? In, in, the, in the plant, at the plant there now, they had, they, that, that's where all the, the uh, steam heat comes from over there. Right, and uh, as far as, uh, as far as I know, the, uh, the president's house and the vice president's house also had uh, all steam heat steam lines coming from the plant oh, also. Yeah. The hotel, the store, the clubhouse, the boarding house, the hospital, uh, the vice president house, and the truck drive was all heated with steam heat from the boilers over at the uh, planting mill there. The plant that they converted into the plant now. Right. Now, the, the truck garage that's standing now, um, was that uh, built on when you when you first started working there as a, a as truck mechanic? As yeah. a truck mechanic? Yeah, when they bought when they bought the uh, uh, logging trucks, they built up that built that garage. See, all the trucks were kept inside in a heated garage, mm -hmm. so they didn't have no problems with them in the cold. In the cold. Well, you've been talking with uh, Henry Guan, a lifetime resident of the